Good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening, guys. How are you today? I'm very well. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys, so today we're going to start unit three. Yesterday we finished. Ah, well, unit number two about the expression so, to, either, and neither, and also another expression like mm, I'm crazy about, I'm not in the mood for, or I am in the mood for, I like, I do like, and all um, this expression that you can use to show, um, let's see, to show emotions, to show agreement, to show disagreement to, to show or to talk about abilities or the abilities that you don't have probably. And that was everything about you, the number uh, two. Remember that the next Friday, uh, tomorrow we have class. Tomorrow we're going to have the second part of unit three. And on Monday, we will have the, the speaking practice. But the next uh, Friday, I will give you, yeah, that could be an extra hour to practice neither and either because I, I know they were difficult topics and probably they are not clear at all. So I will prepare something for uh, next Friday. And that is not an obligation, right, to connect that. That will be optional. And I will not uh, record that class. And maybe I will try to explain different that topic. But today, we're going to start with uh, unit three. We're going to focus on time expressions. We're going to have at, on, uh, in, around, late, until, early, before, and after. And I bring a exercise to, well, a lot of examples to show you how to use them. Then we're going to have a practice. And if we still have time, we're going to have an activity using this expression. So try to uh, pay attention since the beginning. Do not get lost with the use of them. Uh, they are not complicated, but um, sometimes we use to confuse them. Uh, most of the time in and on, because when you translate it, uh, yes, when you translate it, they have the same meaning in Spanish. But in English, no, they are not the same. Okay, now let's see. We're going to start with in, on, and at. Okay. In, on, and at, most of the time, they work together. And when you use them, don't confuse because they also can be prepositional place. Sometimes they are preposition of place, but today we're only focused on preposition of time. Let me show you something before I continue. This, for example, time, they have used, they can be used when you talk about time, but also they can be used when they talk about, when you talk about location, it means places. But today we are only focused on time. Estas tres preposiciones se pueden ocupar para hablar de locaciones, es decir, para hablar de lugares, y para hablar de tiempo. Today, we only focus on time. Okay, so let's see, how can we use these expressions when you talk about time? Okay, let's see. Let's see the first one. Okay, at is to talk about exact time. That is the one that is more specific, exact time. On is to talk about day and dates. Day and dates. 
And the last one in, it's a period of time. They used to be a general period of time. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, I will ask Paola, help me with the example, please. When to use at for time? When to use at for time? At, at exact time, nine o'clock. At exact time, 11 p.m. At exact time, midnight and midnight. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yes. And let's see some examples using this. This, ex this, this preposition, sorry. Okay, Lenin, help me to read them. Example, I went to the doctor at eight o'clock this morning. The shops open at nine a.m. I go to the bed at midnight. Mm -hmm, okay, perfect. So, at is to talk about exact time and the specific that were eight o'clock, nine a.m., um, half past uh, seven, uh, that the same to say seven thirty, and period, a, a specific periods during the day. Midnight, we only have one midnight in all the day. Uh, midday, only one midday. In the morning, we only have one morning in, uh, uh, at the morning, sorry. Uh, we only have one morning, for example, and that's all. But we have to be careful because we're going to have some exceptions. At, let's see, ultra, we use at for exact or precise time. Some phrases do not follow the rule. So we also say they are exceptions. Let's see. Um, okay, Joel, help me to read. At Christmas? Mm -hmm. At Easter? At the beginning of the lesson at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we use at Christmas, thank you, Joel. When we say at Christmas, at Easter, at the beginning of, it could be anything, or at the end of, they are exceptions. Probably they don't sound like in specific or precise time, but that's how we should use this expression, okay? For example, this one. Okay, Madeline, help me to read the examples. ¿Cuántos, uh, teacher? Todos. Two. Okay. I play tennis at the weekend. He doesn't work at night. Not. We say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Okay, thank you. At the weekend, is thick. it doesn't sound like precise time, but we use it like that, at the weekend. That's how we should use the expression. At night, that is another exception because we say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. But when we talk about night, we say at night and not uh, in the night, okay? That's how. Okay, now let's see. Uh, Fabiola, help me with number three, four, and five. Yes, okay. <laughs> At Christmas, we spend a lot of time with our family. At is, is used here to the mean. The time of the Christmas holidays, not Christmas Day. For the day itself, we must say on Christmas Day. I'm working a lot at the moment. At the end of the lesson, the teacher gives homework to the students. Okay, perfect. So at Christmas is general, right? It's not the day, it's just the celebration. So that's why we say at Christmas. But if you want to talk about the day in which you celebrate Christmas, on Christmas and you add day, on Christmas day. But if that is general, just Christmas season at Christmas, okay? Or I'm not working a lot at the moment, 
or at the end of the lesson. That's how we use at. So if we go back, they say, ah, I move. Yes, we have, sorry, let's see. Okay, we have at exact time. Remember, like in a specific hour, and a specific a moment during the day, and we have this is these exceptions at Christmas, at Easter, at the beginning of, at the end of. Okay, that's how we use it. At very very specific. If I show you again this, at very specific, seven a.m., twelve o'clock, five p.m. Most of the time with hours or periods of the day, specific periods during the day. Okay, now let's continue with on. Okay, on, okay, help me with this. Uh, Blanca, on. When we use on? On, on Monday, on Tuesday, on, on my birthday, and days. On Christmas Day, New Year's Day, on Valentine's Day, days. Mm -hmm. On the 25th of December, dates. On the 1st of July, dates. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So uh, that will be 25th. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, because they are ordinal. Uh -huh. Let's see. Ordinal, okay. Hello. Yes. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, Elizabeth. <laughs> okay, guys. So, on, we used to talk about dates and dates. But be careful. Dates without mention the year. Just the day and the month. Day and month because if you add the year that will change a little bit just day and the month months that will be day without the year most of the time on monday on tuesday on all the days of the week on on saturday on friday then a specific days uh when you talk about holidays on christmas day at christmas in general on Christmas Day, that is the specific day that we celebrate. If you say on New Year's Day, on Valentine's Day, okay? At 25th December, at the 1st of July. Dates and dates. Okay, let's see some examples. Then I will ask Delia, help me to read. Example, the children are learning to the cinema on Monday. On Friday, I go to the gym. This means I go to the gym every every Friday. I always have a party on my birthday. Valentine's Day is on the uh, for 14th of February. Remember to put the before day. I went there at the fighting fight on, right. on July of July. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Remember that we put the the terminal the before, right? This one, the, and then we have the specific date on the, and then we have the date. And that's how when we say a specific date about something important or something that you want to focus, we say the, the. That's how we use it. Okay, so on days and dates, that's how we use it. Let's see the next one. Uh, with this one, most of the time we don't have exceptions. Mm, that is not one of the prepositions that used to be complicated. We don't have more exceptions. Just that. And then, okay, now compare with this one. On, it's more specific, but it's like in the middle. It's not too much, very, very specific. It's not general. It's like in the middle. Days and weekend. When you want to talk about the weekend, for example. 
Okay, now let's go back. What about in? Okay, I will ask uh, Mayra, help me to read the uses, periods of time. Okay, in, in the summer, spring, uh, seasons, in December, January, months, in 1975, and 2017, 20, 20, uh, 25 years. In the morning, the af the afternoon, the evening, period during the day, in time unit, five years, four week, future ten minutes from now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, thank you. In all this situation, we can talk or we should use the preposition in. If you talk about season in if you talk about months in in december in january be careful because when you talk about months without specify the day meses sin especificar día porque si ya le ponemos el día eran dates fechas just months in general december january february march and so on then when we have a specific years in 1975, in 2017, in 2025, years. When you use years in and you put the year. And then in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, but we say at night and not in the night. That is the only exception. Periods during the day. And when we talk about future, 10 minutes, from now, in 10 minutes, in five years, in four weeks, and we can continue with the future. In, uh, yeah, it could be in three weeks, in two minutes, in five minutes, we will check the, the activity that could be. Now let's see some examples. I will ask Emma, Madeline again, help me with three, the first three examples. I like to go on holiday in winter. My birthday is in April. I was born in... Oh, 19. <laughs> 1995. Yes. Yes, okay. 1995. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and now, let's see. Vanessa, help me with the rest. Three examples. I don't. Okay. I don't work in the evening. I'm going to start my new job in five weeks. The lesson starts in five minutes. It is now a 55 a.m. And the lesson will start at 9 a.m. Yeah. They talk about future, but this is short period of time, right? That's why we can use in five minutes. Mm -hmm. A veces, so, yes, I can say this in Spanish. A veces nos olvidamos y pensamos que el pasado está muy, muy atrás, ¿verdad? o que el futuro es algo que ya muy adelante va a pasar. Pero no, recordemos que esos periodos de tiempo a veces son confusos en inglés porque hace dos minutitos ya es pasado para nosotros. Si las, son las 7.20, 7.25, todavía es futuro para nosotros. Entonces, siempre tengamos ese lapso, ¿verdad? En ah, presente, pasado, futuro, porque tanto puede ser un periodo largo, puede ser un periodo cortito, y siempre se ubican en pasado, futuro, presente. Por eso es que con algunos temas gramaticales, uno dice, pero es que futuro, ¿y por qué no tengo que poner will? Porque es un futuro cercano. O porque estoy hablando de algo que ya pasó y no ocupo verbos en pasado. Porque es un, es un pasado que acaba de terminar. Entonces, por eso hay como muchas posibilidades de temas gramaticales que nos combinan entre tiempos sin necesidad de saltar entre lo específico de ah, los modales para futuro, los verbos en pasado, o así. That's why. So, uh, be careful with that. But yes, we can talk about future 10 minutes from now, 5 minutes, in 5 minutes. And remember, 
Uh, if you say, I go to the gym, for example, I go to the gym in the afternoon, but if you want to say on Monday afternoon, I am going to the gym, we use on here because the first time is the day. See this thing? I am go, I go to the gym in the afternoon, it's okay because you only took the period of time in the afternoon. But if you include the day, you have to change the preposition. You say on Monday afternoon, right? Because the first uh, time expression that you are giving to me is the day and not the period during the day. Aquí ya la preposición nos cambió porque estamos mencionando el día. El día y el momento del día en el programa. Si solo se dice el momento del día, ah, ok, in. Ok, period of time. Pero si incluíamos el día, decíamos que para hablar de días, ¿qué teníamos? What's the previous? On. Teníamos el de en medio, on. So if you say on Monday afternoon, you cannot say in Monday afternoon. No podríamos decir in Monday afternoon. ¿Por qué me están dando el día? Si ponemos el día, es la primera que se da, entonces... La primera expresión de tiempo quedaría con on Monday afternoon. So when we mix and when we try to be general or specific giving information, be careful with the preposition. Okay? Now let's see. Do not use at, on, and in. They are exceptions. When you use these expressions, you cannot use at, on, in. Neither of them. For example, every, this, tomorrow, last, next. Okay. Let's see. I will ask um, Saraya, help me to read the first three examples. Every week I have an English lesson on Monday. I had an English lesson lesson last Monday. Next Monday, I am going to have an English lesson. Okay, perfect, thank you. Be careful with this because we are using on, but it is before the day, so there is no problem. The exception is you cannot use at, on, in, before, every, this, tomorrow, last. Acá, no podemos poner on. Every, before every, no, we cannot put any of these prepositions. Before uh, last, we cannot put any preposition. Before next, we cannot use them. But if in the rest of the sentence, you want to use it or you need to use it, for example, this, I have an English lesson on Monday. Yes, you can do it. Okay. Now let's see, I will ask Anna, help me with the other three examples. Okay, teacher, I don't have an English lesson today. Tomorrow I'm going to have an extra English lesson. Yesterday I had an English lesson. Okay, perfect, thank you. So we have yesterday. That is another that we cannot use a preposition yesterday. We cannot say in yesterday, at yesterday, on yesterday. No, we cannot. Tomorrow, on tomorrow. No, never. In tomorrow, at tomorrow. No, you don't need it. That's fine. Or um, today, in today, at today, on today. No, we cannot use it like that. They are not, can be used like that okay so let's see let's continue with then we have the next uh prepositions okay before to continue do you have question with in on at or is that at the moment is that clear tell me Por el momento creo que estamos bien. okay Con ese ejercicio, vamos a ver. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, I will okay. send this. Okay, perfect. I will send this. Just remember that in is the general. On is like in the middle. 
It's not too general, but it's not too very specific. And the one that you want to be very, very specific is at. Okay, I will send this to. Okay, now let's continue with the next one. That will be until and by. Okay, until and by. Until and by. Let's see. Until, then today just focus on preposition use. Uh, remember that many times, uh, many or yes, a lot of words in English can have two meanings and two uses, different uses. That's why probably uh, it's, it's something that we have different from Spanish because in Spanish, you have something and you can call that object with many different names, but in English it's opposite. You have one word and it have different meanings. That's why we change it. So until is a word that could be a preposition, but also is a conjunction. Today, just focus on prepositions. If then we have conjunctions, a topic about conjunctions, you will see again this word, used as a conjunction, but this preposition. Okay, until is a preposition in a conjunction. Until often is shortened. Shorten, it means contract, when you create a contraction. To, t -e, till, or till. You can write it in these two ways. La podemos escribir de estas dos formas. Contractada, till, or apostrophe, till. And they sound exactly the same. Till or till. Until, till, till. Till and till are more informal. And we don't usually use them in formal writing. If you are preparing a report for your boss, if you are preparing a, a speech or something similar, please try to use until, right? the full word till the, the two options till and till is informal when you speak with your friends when that is not an important situation or when you are chatting with someone you can just tell okay let's see the meaning of this okay i will ask uh, let's see let's see vanessa help me to read this okay go ahead as a preposition. Until as a preposition means up to the time that. We played chess until midnight, up to midnight. The field didn't end till 11 o'clock. Continue. Yes, please. We, we use four with enter or till to talk about when something begins and when it ends. I worked, I worked out at the gym from 6 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. The road outside our house will be closed from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, let's see, guys. Until, when we say up to, up to, it meaning the time that, when something finish, that will be until. Until, as a preposition, it means up to. Hasta. That's meaning. The time that we play chess until midnight. That was the time when you had stopped doing that activity or the field didn't end till 11 o'clock. That was a really long movie and finished at that time. That is the use of until. And you can say till or until. Then you can combine until with from. From. When we use from with until or till, is to talk about when something begins and when that activity ends, the beginning and the end. 
when you want to talk about the period when that activity begins, you say from, and you say the first schedule from 6 p.m. And when it finish, you say till, until, both, the, the one that you prefer, 7.30 p.m. And that is the period. How, that's how you confer it. The beginning and the end of something. And basically, that is the use of until. Okay, when something finish, and if you want to compare the beginning and the end of an activity, you use from, from 6 p.m., from 6 a.m., Till midnight, till 7.30, until uh, my lunch time. I was working really hard from uh, 6 a.m. until my lunch time. That could be the end of the activity. Uh, in this case, being working so hard, right? Okay, now I can see. What else we have? We we have another, by. Remember that at the beginning we say until and by, until and by. So until when the period finish, or if you want to compare the beginning and the end of the period. Now let's see what happened with by. I will ask Anna, help me to read the first, let, let me show you. Okay, teacher. Uh, we use by, not until, to talk about something that will happen before a particular time or deadline. The movie will be finished by 9 p.m. And not the movie will be finished until till 9 p.m. Okay, yeah, perfect. So that is important because they, is, they are so similar and we can confuse them. Uh, we use by to talk about something that will happen before a particular time or deadline, like limit time, como fecha limite. We cannot say until. It means hasta, but we cannot use it with something that hasn't happened. The movie will be finished by 9 p.m. But you cannot say the movie will be finished until 9 p.m. That is not possible. That's why we have until and by. Two expressions in similar situation, but they have different uses. Okay, now let's see the next example. Soraya, help me with this, with the second. <laughs> We don't use until or till to talk about quantity or numbers. We use up to the taxi can take up to five people. Mm -hmm. Not the taxi. Uh -huh. the, the one that is not correct, not, the taxi can take until five people. Why? Because that expression in Spanish is so confused. El taxi puede llevar hasta cinco personas. That would be the sentence in the Spanish. But until it means, yes, that's true, it means hasta, but cannot be used with quantities or numbers. That's why we have another expression. That would be better, up to, up to. We don't use until or till, the same, to talk about quantity or numbers. We use up to. The taxi can take up to five people. That will mean el taxi puede llevar hasta cinco personas. Pero no es el hasta de until. We need another expression. So be careful with that. And they are exceptions. I, well, that's why I bring it to you. And let's see, Madeline, help me with number three. Okay. We don't use until or still to talk about distance. We use as far as 
Larry loved me as far as the shop and I walk the rest of the way home. Not Larry drove me until the shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is another situation that maybe is confusing in Spanish because once again, we use the expression hasta, right? Larry drove me hasta the shop and I walked the rest of the way home. But we cannot say till or until. We need another expression that means hasta, but in this situation, because you are talking about distance, we use as far as, as far as. They are different, okay, give me a second. Any questions? Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. You can explain again the use. Why, please? I don't have the clear. Okay, yes. When we have, they say something that will happen. And as before a particular time, you know that the movie will finish at 9 p.m. That's why we use by. The movie will be finished by 9 p.m. You have the particular time. You have the specific uh, period of time when the movie is going to finish. So this better? Uh, it's something like I not finish. It's, uh, o sea, está pasando en ese momento. Mm -mm. Will happen. It's future. Uh, like if you say, I will finish my class, uh, my English class by uh, 9, 9 p.m. You know that the uh, class will finish at 9 p.m. Después sería, ¿qué está sucediendo? Mm, yes, but that's, that's the idea. Until means hasta. So the translation for that is something that would happen hasta the specific hour. But we cannot use until. We use by. Is that better, Lenny? Teacher, es como cuando decimos eh, la película va a terminar ahí por ah, cuando uno dice ah, como por las 9 pm no es así yes uh -huh. ah ok pero prácticamente que va y sería como como un tiempo de caducidad pero hablando en futuro uh -huh. yes exactly that's why we say will happen before a particular time or deadline. Yes? Uh, teacher, y, y until es como en un intervalo de tiempo de, de digamos, de 8 hasta 9 p.m. No sé, algo así. The difference between until is that the actions are already finished. In the previous, until we played, that is past. Just until midnight, it already oh. happened. The oh. film didn't end till 11 o'clock. It finished. And if you compare from to, you are comparing two situations, so there is no problem. That's why. Now it's better? Okay. Sorry, teacher. <laughs> I'm sorry, too much blood. You can other example about bite. Right. Okay. Um imagine that you start classes at 7 a.m. in the morning. And you know that you finish school at 12 at midday. So you can say, I will finish class by 12 o'clock. Oh, okay. I maybe I understand. 
Thank you. Okay, try to give me an example. Uh, uh, the... ¿Cómo se dice partido? Partido de match. fútbol. Match. Uh, soccer ma match. The soccer match I finish. Future? Uh, uh, yes, yes. The soccer match I will be finished uh, by 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. By? by 11 o'clock. Yes, exactly. Because you know the time when the, the match. Yes, exactly. Okay, I understand. Thank you, teacher. Okay, perfect. You know the time, you know the deadline. Yes, like the limit time. Imagine that you cannot be there uh, after 11 o'clock. And that's why you have to finish the match at 11. So you can say, I will finish the match or we will finish the match by 11. Other example, maybe I will be um, my interview will be finished in the one o'clock PM. Mm -hmm. okay, and why? Why? One? What? Uh, PM o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Okay. So, guys. Now, let's see. Here, by and on. Okay, before you continue, anyone else have a question? Or is better? Any question? I, I have other question. Okay, tell me. When the use by, uh, always use uh, the time future? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, let's see. Uh, by and until. By, if that would be no later, not no later than time. Something happens by a time in the future. That's why, yes, Lenin, it's future. And until is up to. Up to, we had a limit time. But not after at a specific time to say how long the situation continued. Okay, let's see the example using by. Madeline, help me with all the examples using by. Uh, todos. Yes. Okay. Please send me the report by Saturday. We need to be there by noon. He had Pro promise to be back by four o'clock. Your application must be received. Como se dice? Receive. 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 Receive by the 22 April. I send the documents to them today so they must receive them by on Friday. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, thank you. So tell me, Delia, for you, this all these sentences are in present or they're talking about future, something that will happen in the future. Oh uh, uh the what eh, las que ella leyó. Yes. Um, uh, it's in the future. It's the future, yes. Remember, guys, that sometimes in English, we can call about future without using auxiliary verbs like will and going to. But they are future. Please send me the report. It's present by Saturday. It's not now. I will send you on Saturday. But she or he is telling me the the order is giving me the direction, the order right now in the present. 
but it means I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to do it Saturday. And today is it's Thursday. I still have tomorrow and maybe Saturday morning to send the report. Or uh, we need to be there by noon. Imagine that it's in the morning and we have, a, mm -hmm. yes, we have a meeting. And I say, please hurry up. We need to be there by noon. But is it still 10 a.m. in the morning? You will say, relax, we still have time. Don't worry. That's how all the action will be in future. That's how we use by. Okay, now let's see until examples. Fabiola, tell me to read. Okay, uh, until examples. I will stay until four o'clock. Are you going to work until 11? Until my father came home, I read a book. I couldn't give up this morning. I stayed in the bed until 11. That, that's just how to wait until next week. Not is there until after you finish your dinner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with all of them, we have a specific period of time. That is the difference. And... We have four o'clock, until four o'clock, until 11, until my father came home. That is the specific activity. Until my father came home, I read a book. And until 11 again, we have until next week and until, until after you finish your dinner. Okay? So... Until, specific, up to, but not after. It doesn't mean not after. And a specific time to say how, uh, to say how long a situation continue. That is the difference between by and until. They could be similar for us in Spanish, but no, they, in English they are different. They have different meanings. By. No later than that, that time, something happens by in a future time and until it's in a specific time. That's how we use by and until. Okay. Now, do you have questions with this? Or is yes, better? teacher. Tell me. Uh, cuando decimos, uh, no, no, perdón. Uh, by Podría ser entonces como, podría significar, por ejemplo, donde dice, please send me the report by Saturday. Sería, por favor, enviarme el reporte por el sábado o hasta el sábado. O sea, ¿cómo traducimos by si es que tiene una traducción exacta? The second example that you give me. Mm, we need to be there by noon. No, you 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 told me two, you told me two sentences. You say hasta. Uh, uh -huh. hasta. Yes. O sea que no podemos traducirlo como por 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 ejemplo donde dice we need to be there by noon hasta el mediodía, sino que no. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. The next one, guys, that will be early and late okay early and late early okay let's see delia help me to read just the chart the, the yellow part early uh, means early, early means done before the usual or expected time for a mature matutinal first initial hmm. yeah. okay opposite of early is late, slow, thirty, backward, last, recent, late, latest, final, ultimate, because, this, yes. Um, okay, we can stop. Uh -huh. Okay, we can stop there. Don't okay. <laughs> worry. Uh, just tell you, help me with, with two examples. Help me with two examples. Huh? With two uh, yeah. Okay. My father started work 
My father started work early in the morning. It is too early for the children to go to school. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you, Deli. So, early means done before the usual expect time. That's all the meaning. We, we cannot confuse with any anyone else. And we have the opposite. What could be opposite of early? I give you all these examples. Uh, we're going to find a lot of them, even more. But early is to talk about it. Something done before the usual or expect time. Early. Early in the morning. Air, it's too early for. I'm glad you're early. Uh, by leaving early. Gets up early. Came so early. And some. It's to talk about that. When you develop something before the usual expected time. And then we have the opposite. That will be late. It means, okay, uh, Fabiola, help me to read. Late means. Okay. Um, that's the, okay, late means. Taking place after the expected. Proper, slow, backward, and recent. Mm -hmm. Help me with two examples. I continue. With two examples. Okay. My dad is always late for work in the morning. Sorry, little man, but you're too late to take the time. Okay. So late is the opposite, right? Early, that's good meaning. But late, it's bad. It's too late to do something. Taking place after the expected proper slow backward present and that's how we use it's always late it's too late to take the exam it's too late to apply for the contest uh, when you say it's too late in general i'm late again and that's how we use it with this two preposition i can know we can add something else it's just that early and late it's, that's all that we have about it. okay now Let's see. Before and after, I put this at the end because I know that you already know how to use them. They are not complicated. It's just something we had the problem, right? Because we confused before and after because in Spanish, it has more sense to say before, like después, and after, like antes. I know that we had the problem, but Try to, to switch, right? Before, that means antes and after, it means después. But it's the same. It's similar to after. We can say later. That's how we can use it. And before, we can say ago. Because it's a, a previous time, right? That's how can we use it. Okay, guys. Because of the time, we're going to stop here. And uh, tomorrow we're going to took a couple of sec a minutes at the beginning of the class to see the examples you've seen before and after. I will not skip this, but yes, it's time. So guys, that, that was everything for today. And tomorrow we get, we're going to continue with the last part of this and with a new one, okay? Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And if you yeah, still bye. have a question, you can ask me. Don't forget that. Bye bye. Okay, okay bye, bye bye. Good evening. Thank you. Good See night. you. See you next week, teacher. See you. Bye bye.